everyone. Welcome to another edition of Métis War. You're here with Timothy and Alexandria. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Well, it's been a while since our last show and a lot of things has happened. Of course, we know Cassidy's doing a miserable, miserable job as president of the Métis National Council. Uh, we already knew that when uh, she wasn't transparent, although she went out there talking about transparency, transparency, transparency. But we knew damn well when we were asking questions about certain financials and we were those questions were not answered and they were getting avoided. And uh, they still have not been transparent on a lot of those financial records there. And so that's very concerning for a lot of people in the Métis Nation. But also what indicates that she's doing a miserable job is that she, they, the MNC has now vacated the building that they were in. Now, you would get some type of damn notice that you were going to have to vacate your building. So wouldn't you, as president, already have another building set up? Because if not, where in the hell is all the money going? Because we do know that that trip, the Rome sure as hell got pulled off pretty damn good, didn't it? It went real smooth for everybody there. But sure as hell uh, having problems keeping a uh, building, it seems. Well, before we go into the uh, vacating of uh, 340 McLaren Street in Ottawa, I just uh, somebody had sent me a screen grab on uh, the MNC website to indicate that there is still no financials posted online for the MNC. And I know we've been all waiting for the financials and uh, other people have made mention that maybe it's because uh, the statement of claim went out, etc. They're not going to put, but we all know. Let, uh, let me say this. That's a bunch of bullshit. And I'm going to say this because the statement of claim had certain financials in it, right? That's a great excuse to use, right? Your statement of claim. What we were asking about concerning the financials was the money that the MNC actually had, which their statement of claim uh, 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 concerned other money. We were asking about certain other money that the MNC actually had, and guess what? They did not answer that shit. And you know what? Talking about financials, like I said, I'm like a broken record again, uh, and we're going to keep uh, looking into the uh, Métis Veterans Legacy Fund, still nothing on that. But we do know, because it's been all over various medium uh, media, that an audit was done. An audit was done at the MNC to be able to determine uh, groundwork or basis for this statement of claim. So there is an audit out there. There are financials out there. But Some type of audit but they're not being given to the Métis people. So when you do not show financials, uh, you're not being transparent. I don't know how many, you, you can cut it any way you want, you're not being transparent. And this thing that still really, really bothers me is saying when Cassidy did indicate that you know the statement of claim was issued, but she would speak on it no further. Uh, and that, that was her telling the people to kiss her ass, basically. And it, it would seem it would have to be a damn audit done to get all that stuff together for the statement of claim. But go ahead. I, I like I said, I, I really don't understand that. And again, very, very disappointment, very disappointed in the way that the Métis National Council is conducting itself right now. Uh, to me, it just seems like they're floundering and there is no transparency. There is no accountability. I'm glad you got your free trip to Rome and this is not to diminish from residential school survivors in any way, shape or form, but I'm glad you were able to enjoy yourself in Rome while we're still wondering with where the fiance. financial yeah well, well yeah with the fiance and we're still wondering what the status of this I mean was subpoenas issued did people get subpoenas I mean Métis people out there we're in we're in the dark we are in the dark we have no clue what is going on whatsoever and I can tell you how surprised I was Métis people across this great nation in Canada into the United States when I read an MNC tweet that was dated May 12th, 2022. And it says the Métis National Council would like to advise all visitors. Well, don't you think it should say also advise all citizens instead of 
visitors, very impersonal. All visitors to the offices located at 340 McLaren Street in Ottawa that we are no longer available at this address. Okay, so this, you're telling vid visitors, not your citizens. Because they don't give a shit about the Métis people as a whole. They only give a shit about certain Métis people, it would seem to me. And that is the problem. And again, uh, the MNC goes on to tweet that we apologize for any convenience, however, inconvenience, however, the Louis Riel Capital Corporation, in brackets they say, our landlords have demanded we vacate our offices. We will be sure to update you once we have new office space we look forward to welcome you welcome you back well don't you think if you knew i mean they must have known this was coming wouldn't you have a backup office space and where's all the paperwork where's people's personal information where is that being stored now is it in a safe secure location well right now they don't have a location so is it at somebody's that home of. that we know of somebody's home or, or where where is the information? And they go on to say that in the interim, if you wish to reach our offices for general information, please contact info at metination.ca or you can reach MNC staff by their dedicated uh, email addresses. But I'm no phone number. <laughs> but, 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 but look, here here's the thing that that people need to really be concerned about here, okay? Because if if personal information is being kept in somebody's home, okay, so people get visitors to their home, they get guests come over or whatever, right? What's to say that this personal information, as you asked, is it being kept in a safe place? Is any of the sensitive information going to get, uh, 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 you know, I mean, is there a possibility for identity theft If uh, on some of these records? We don't know. We're just asking. Is there a possibility of identity theft happening uh, if some of these records get into the wrong hands? Uh, you know, again, we don't know. That is a question that we're asking. And again, like you said, is it being kept in a safe and secure place? And why in the hell, because they were given some type of notice there, why in the hell did they get another designated space? Well, this is a alleged. Because they don't have one that we're aware of. That's right. And this is alleged, and this is another uh, uh, screenshot, and this is alleged because we don't have anything to back it up. Uh, apparently, uh, Minister Goudon of the MMF uh, chimed in in regards to the, an, in response to the MNC tweet, and he says, I quote, the MNC was provided with 10 days notice to cure the default, but chose not to do so. As a result of the failure to remedy the default, uh, the company 610 proceeded with the notice of termination and provided the MNC with 30 days notice, 30 days notice to vacate the property, end of quote. So there seems to be a lot more going on with what the MNC has just randomly posted to its visitors folks uh then and meets the eye we know they're not transparent on a lot of our questions we have about certain financials so where in the hell is all them millions and millions and millions of dollars going i mean you know you had to, you had 10 days they gave you 10 days to, so now you're out the building then to extend your time to make sure that you've got a different building so to get to give you a bigger uh section of time there if you needed it it would seem to me because they were giving them 10 days but 10 days would be enough with all that damn money to uh secure another location for sure so there you go well it's interesting on may 12 2022 is when uh both sides involved in this uh, uh alleged conflict uh, uh came out and gave uh uh you know releases to social media and i know the manitoba metis federation did just that and it's uh it does say that uh 610 manitoba limited makes a statement on the termination of the building lease in ottawa and uh it said that uh the 610 manitoba limited in bracket 610 a subsidiary of the Lurie real capital corporation and the metis economic development organization took 
possession of 340 McLaren Street in Ottawa due to the uh, Métis National Council Secretariat Inc. MNC default and fundamental breach of the lease. A termination, a notice of termination was issued on April 12, 2022. So here's the timeline, folks. Uh, the M MMF is saying that a notice of termination was issued on April 12, 2022. So 30 days from April 12th would be the May 12th when the MNC came out with their statement and the MMF came out with their statement. So that would have been the 30 day notice that uh, allegedly uh, Will Goudon mentioned in his tweet that they were given 30 days to vacate the premises. 30 days to vacate the prim premises and then uh, they were also given the 10 days the default or whatever. So we're looking at 30 damn days and you put no priority on a building but there was a priority on that trip there damn sure was a priority on that trip and don't get me wrong residential schools that was a horrible situation but in no shape or way no way shape or form should anybody have went over to rome to kiss the pope's ass basically and ask for an apology that should, and a matter of fact i'm not going to refer to the pope as the pope anymore i'm just going to refer as that guy the, the vatican so anytime you hear me say that guy because I don't like what the title Pope stands for. I do. I have no appreciation at all for the Catholic Church or Catholicism and their colonial religion. Uh, and and let's, let's dive into that a little bit real quick. Everybody's given a freedom of choice of religion except for the native people. That freedom was robbed from them. That freedom was taken away from them. The children were force fed Catholicism. And, and, and other religions and throughout the residential schools in North America as a whole. And so you got to realize that that so, so freedom of religion uh, was not a was not something that the natives had uh, during this time. They were forced into a religion. And folks, again, this is in my mind a prime example on how the, the current leadership of the MNC is not being transparent to the Métis people. So allegedly, if you were served this notice on April 22nd, 2022, uh, so May 12th would have been your 30 days when this company took possession back of their building. So the MNC waited till May 12th to tell its people that they are no longer at this building because they, because they don't think they got to inform the people of shit. Let's be real here. They don't think that they got to inform the people of anything, it seems. They they have no desire. Cassidy does not need to be president of the MNC. And that is the thing, folks. We're going to be talking about the MMF election here in a little bit. But one of the things that I want to show you or, or bring to your attention is we were in the forefront fighting for Chartier to be removed from the MNC and to get a new president of the MNC. However, what happened was we got into a worse situation than what we had with Chartier when Cassidy was put in there as president. So that should be a damn wake up call to everybody. Uh, you know, it, it is not better with Cassidy at all. It's damn. It, now we had our problems with Chartier, but we should have tried. Uh, uh, hope uh, there should have been some kind of way we could have worked that out. We tried and tried and tried, but we never w were able to work that out with Chartier, and to come to some kind of mutual understanding for all the Métis people uh, within the Métis Nation. Uh, things has not improved with Cassidy, and at this point, we would have been better off had Chartier stayed president of the MNC. I hate to say that. Since we were the ones leading that change, but we made a horrible, horrible mistake listening to the people we were listening to. Because I can tell you this, certain people told us, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. So, okay, we were, we were assured that things were going to go down one way where we'd get a strong president for the MNC. And then what did, what happened? nothing that we were told was going to happen has happened. So yeah, we're damn disappointed. And you know what, Métis people out there, this is my opinion. I really think that Cassidy is a puppet 
president and I'm really, really appalled. You need somebody that has, you know, experience, that has the stamina and has the forthright to lead uh, the organization and to be positive. And again, this, uh, you know, the MNC losing their their office location is now another prime example of the lack of transparency and accountability to the Métis people. And allegedly, this is more, um, the uh, MMF said that the MNC had previously referred to the lease as uh, purported and suspicious and took the position that the lease was assailable for a, vi a variety of reasons. And the MNC previously indicated that it was prepared to proceed to litigation and seek a declaration that it would that it could terminate the lease. So did they go through with that litigation? They could, and I know the statement of claim that we mentioned uh, before uh, the MNC was going on the scorched earth policy where they're saying allegedly the MMF had let, left the financial status of the MNC in such a mess and disarray uh, that's why they did the audit irregularities and all this stuff. But for God's sakes, why would you lose your office space and tell the Métis people, pardon me, the visitors the day that they take retake possession of the building that you are building less people? And, Come on, and wake here, up. And, here, and here's another thought. If there was issues there, from the moment Cassidy was elected, why didn't they switch buildings? Why didn't they get a different location? I mean, this shows that they can't run any damn thing. They've already lost their building. They've lost their building. So since the time she's been president, which was months and months, uh, she she they could have found a different location. I'm talking about what? Uh, we're talking about what? Six six or more months here. They could have found another location. And they could have they could have been uh, out of that lease or whatever. They could have already been doing all that, and uh, and be told that you got to go, uh, and then inform people on the day of. I mean that shows mismanagement. That shows piss poor leadership. That shows that this is not going the way that it should be going. And make no mistake, Cassidy is not a better president for the MNC. It's the, and she needs to be re, she needs to actually be elected out of office. They need to put somebody else in there that would actually do the right things and be transparent. And yeah. Well, you know what? This all falls into, you know, April was the month when the MNC, the delegation, all the other delegations went to visit the Pope. I'm sure planning was all focused on going to see the Pope. And uh, they just let this fall through their fingers and just, this is my opinion, just lapse. And again, the MMF reiterates, it's alleged that uh, the MNC again was provided with 10 days notice to cure the default. And they were, uh, the MNC was provided with 30 days notice to vacate. So you mean to say in 30 days, the MNC floundered and they couldn't find another location so the day they were they got millions and millions of dollars well, don't they, they i mean we have... don't know we don't know well, well we don't know what's going on because yeah. you let that fall through your fingers and you, you're building lists and you're informing your visitors on may 12th that you got no building so what does that tell uh government officials Métis citizens out there that you let this slip through your fingers. You got no building. God knows where all the documents, paperwork, and all this stuff is so floating somebody's around. Somebody's house probably. Oh, are they checking emails on the toilet? Are they conducting business from somebody's personal toilet? That's what I want to know. I, I, I really want to know that. Is, is, is these records and personal information, financial information, or whatever other records there are, are they being kept in a bathroom? Where in the hell are they being kept? Well, you know what, folks? These are questions as Métis citizens. I mean, you sh these are just questions. When you have an organization is telling the visitors the day they are told to get out that they have to vacate, we got no building, folks. Is that an organization that is going to be putting your best interest and is going to fight for you when, ooh, today I'm going to announce to everybody, we got no building. We got no building. And we said it before, everybody that elected Cassidy as president, they need to be replaced. They need to be voted out of office. We said we, we were going to get involved with the elections, and we will. They just had an election for the Métis Nation of British Columbia. 
then uh, don't don't think for one minute just because you didn't hear us do another show. Even though we supported that candidate that uh, Lewis uh, supported in the, uh, uh, our last show, I think it was our last show or the show before that, I believe it was our very last show mm-hmm. that we just did, uh, don't think that just because there hadn't been another show out there that we hadn't been in the backgrounds uh, uh, meeting with people and talking with people and uh, uh, people contacting us and asking us questions about British Columbia. But keep in mind what we're waiting for. And again, before we uh, zero into our next item on the agenda here, uh, it, it said that the MNC had been a tenant since uh, 2011 with no issues or concerns. And, you know, I have issues with the MMF and some of their, you know, whatever they're doing. But this statement, I, I agree with it. I just wish the MNC would kind of mirror that in. And I quote, it says 610, with, which is one of their subsidiary companies, has an obligation to the Red River Métis citizens to make wise investments and to protect its assets, end of quotation. I just really wish that the MNC would make wise decisions to protect its citizens. Don't call them visitors. Direct them as, uh, you know, your citizens, your people, and make wise choices to protect the Métis people. Don't show up on social media May 12th, 2022, and say, visitors, we no longer have a building, and just leave it at that. Well, here's the thing. They didn't make a wise decision when they put Cassidy as president. And Cassidy, since she's been president, hasn't made wise decisions that we've seen. I don't know. Has any of y'all seen any wise decisions that she she made? I mean, she prioritized the trip to Rome, which, uh, guess what? You know, yeah, the residential schools, survivors, that's a very important thing. But in our minds, the Pope should have brought his ass to Canada and apologize in Canada, not the other way around where people have to go basically bow to that guy at the Vatican and uh, basically uh, uh, beg and give gifts for an apology. Uh, That's a bunch of bullshit. He should have flew his ass uh, to Canada. As we know, he he, he has the capability of flying his ass to Canada because he's about to do that. So why couldn't he just give that apology then? But it was a nice trip for everybody, right? Because uh, I believe when if you're really representing the residential school survivors, you don't insult them with giving that guy at the Vatican gifts. Uh, you just don't do it. That was a slap in the face. We've said it before. It really was. It's a slap in the face to a lot of residential school survivors. But hey, people who was not residential school survivors participated in that trip. And uh, yeah, they had them a nice little trip, didn't they? Well, again, but yeah, there was some residential school survivors. We're we're not trying to diminish uh, the experiences from the residential school survivors that went to the Vat- the Vatican. We applaud their b- bravery in telling their stories because their stories should be uh, told. Truth should be known, and uh, we're just not you know not happy with you know delegations of people uh, that really are not survivors and. I don't agree with that at all. And uh, you don't gift an abuser. Uh, this is just a loose example with gifts. Uh, yeah. that, that's just disrespectful. That is just ignorant, pure ignorance. Well, well, the Catholic Church is the one that abused the Native people and Métis people and all the indigenous people. And throughout time, they've abused people, not just in Canada or North America, but all over the world, wherever there is a Catholic priest or a nun or a monk. They've committed abuse for, what, uh, uh, 1,700 years now? They've committed this abuse. Atrocities. Atrocities. Abuse throughout history. Yeah, and people love them for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, Catholicism is not my path, that's for sure. But we got relatives that are Catholics, so we can't speak, speak too bad, or our relatives are going to get pissed off. But I can tell you this, I, I, I have no respect for Catholicism, I, I mean, you know, at all. I just consider it a colonial religion. Yeah, and I mean, it's just not the right path. And before, you know, as we end off this topic with the MNC being buildingless, and uh, for a lot of you that may or may not know, not on social media, may, may not be up to speed, we know that the MNC filed a statement of claim in late January against the former president, uh, Chartier, Manitoba MMF president, David Chartrand, and others. And in part, it, part of that statement of claim, uh, alleged that the lease had been part of a scheme. Uh, their MNC is saying it's a scheme. 
and was the result of a breach of uh, fiduciary duties by Chartier and Chartran. And, uh, but it's interesting to note that the MNC did not name the holding company or the numbered company 610 as a party so i don't know how that's going to play out where the you know the holding company the 610 is the one that owns the building so how could you dispute uh the lease uh problems with the alleged lease in your statement of claim when you don't own you don't name uh the holding company that owns the building in in the statement of claim i don't know how legally th that would play out if you're not even if you're i mean the lease has nothing to do uh with Chartier and Chartran, it has to do with the holding company, which is 610 as the holding company. So I don't know how that's going to fly through the uh, statement of claim. Yeah, and going back to my statement prior to that about Catholicism, I want people to know I am not putting down Christianity at all. I myself am a Christian. I just don't believe in Catholicism. There's other paths in Christianity and, and Catholic, the, the Catholics and Christians are two different things. Let's be clear about that. And we are talking, I, I mean, I, it's just more interesting and this is just alleged too that uh, um, as a re, there was negotiations with the MNC and uh, the holding company 610 agreed to raise the basic rent by 4%. So the rent for that particular building was $19,448. And uh, to extend the term of the lease by seven years to the year April uh, 2028. And uh, on April 6, 2021, 610 and the MNSC Inc. Ex executed the amended lease. So uh, again, uh, David Chartrand denies the allegation uh, in regards to uh, that the amended lease is much higher than the far fair market value rent for that particular area in Ottawa, so uh, there's uh, they're saying it's a comparable rate, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So, uh, there, there was a there, there was a, a market review were presented to the MNC Board of Governors, uh, LRCC, on behalf of 610, proposed that the MNC rent for 340 McLaren for a monthly rate for a monthly rate of 18,500, and this was uh, below the monthly rate that the MNC was paying for its previous space. And uh, again, the, it had a lot of storage space, far, five parking spots, etc. And it was uh, Métis owned, as we know, through uh, 610. I think for the amount of money that they were paying there, I think that they could have got even a bigger, bigger space, a bigger building. Yeah, you don't have to be so close up the colonial politicians butthole to, uh, to have a building. You don't have to be like right there. You could actually be uh, in a different location completely and uh, save money. How about that? Hey, hey, that's a great idea. How about saving some damn money and giving it to the Métis people instead of uh, paying to, to make sure you get get a nice little location next to your colonial politicians there. Maybe don't, maybe get a little further out. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got to do a little walking or maybe you got to do a little uh, driving to get where you need to go, but get a little further out, save a little bit of money and, uh, and, and definitely uh, get it, get a location where you can save money and give it to the Métis people because it's not about you. It's not about you at all. And you're not going to be in office long because you will be voted out of office. Uh, and, and, and here's the thing. I, I don't know because the way Cassidy was voted into office, she was not put in there by the Métis people. She was put in there by a certain amount of people. And you got to understand that this was not a nation vote. And I think for us, uh, a seat like the Métis National Council president, I really believe that it should be something that the citizens as a whole vote on and not the little few there. I think it should be a larger uh, amount of people voting on that. And uh, hopefully uh, she gets voted out of office. But I'm telling everybody that everybody that voted her into office she she they need to be elected out of office they need to be voted out of office uh because we do not want to see cassidy stick around there and continue to destroy as she's done since day one destroy them and see and again folks like i said this is just another example of lack of transparency and accountability you don't wait to the day that you the other company is taking possession of your building to inform anybody i mean uh, over eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars 
a month for rent. I mean, you got to have somebody working there that could have found something that wasn't so pricey. I mean, yeah, if you want to remain in Ottawa Central because you're a national organization, but good God, be on the ball. Put your organization and your people first. Don't worry about Pope or whatever you're going to fly, you're going to do this. I mean, not having a building isn't that kind of important? Shouldn't that be a priority? I'll tell you what would be an important thing for Cassidy to do. Here's an invitation. Cassidy can come on our show. No pre-sent questions. Just come on our show. And, and, and we will ask you questions. You answer them to the best of your ability. We're going to conduct an interview with you. This is an invitation to conduct an interview with you. You come on to our show. And let us do an interview with you. We're not going to send you the questions ahead of time. And we will be respectful. We will do a great interview. And we'll see if we can't change the way things have been going a little bit. And uh, maybe you can get some better relations uh, with the, the Métis people. Uh, because right now you're doing a horrible job. And you need some guidance other than what you're getting. Because the guidance you're getting is sucking, man. It's absolutely sucking. But if you think you're a good president, then take the invitation. Come on to our show and let us ask you questions. We'll, we'll conduct an hour-long interview. Yeah, yeah, that's right. One hour interviewing you. And Why are there no 2021 financials put on the MNC uh, website? Uh, son, somebody sent me a screen, screen grab on May 12th. Still, the last financials that are indicated on the MNC is March 31st, 2020. So where in the hell are the 2021 financials? You are not being tra transparent. I'm just tired of uh, the Métis people being misled down the garden path because, I mean, it just burns me up. You're not being transparent. I'm just sick to death of it. Right. And here's the thing. Again, come on our show. Let us interview you. Yeah, we're, we're a Métis show, so maybe uh, that's of no interest to you because we're not colonial controlled. But if it is of some interest to you, maybe just come on to our show. Let us conduct the interview. And you know what? If we get to a question that you just don't want to answer or you don't feel like you can answer, just say pass, and we'll go to the next question. We, we Again, we'll say we'll be respectful, and we won't, we won't, uh, we, we'll try to make it as, comfort, as comfortable as I can't say the word. Comfortable. Yeah, it's hard to say that word for me today for whatever reason. Well, I don't see too as, many comfortable things about the MNC, so yeah, yeah, it would be hard to say. Yeah, we'll make it as comfortable. Oh, yeah. Comfortable. I can't yeah. even. <laughs> yeah. Sketchy. For you as we can, and uh, it just come on to the show. I mean, is it of some interest to you to actually do an interview with uh, a Métis show? Uh, not just a Métis show, but uh, I guess we're probably the top. Métis show out there right now that's specific to Métis and so yeah I'm, I mean if, if it has some interest to you and you want to reach a lot of people and you want to uh, maybe build uh, some better relationships within in the nation take the invitation and come on the show everybody's hearing us give you the invitation and again we will be respectful and Métis people out there, don't you think financials, money, uh, how you spend uh, government, federal government, you know, government money important to your citizens? Who the hell knows when the, the 20, you know, the new financials for the MNC will come out. Maybe they're using the excuse, the statement of claim that came out in January. But I mean, everybody knows that there was an audit of some sort done to be able to initiate the statement of claim. But where in the hell is all the money? I guess you didn't have enough money for your building. So, like I said, May 12th, you're telling everybody out there, we got no building. We got no building. Uh, okay. You just let it slip on by. So, I mean, that's incompetence in my mind. And, I mean, if, if you can't even hold on to your building, you can't inform your citizens. How uh, can you lead a nation? They, that's what I mean. I mean, I mean, I've never seen Chartran, not that I can remember, ever get kicked out of a building. The MMF ever get kicked Not that I can remember. No, but she, see, the MNC is not giving full details when they make a statement, yeah. not giving uh, their people, they're just giving them a shock factor. 
oh my we've been asked by our landlord we got to leave they're not giving the people the full story no according allegedly you had 10 days to rectify the the default then you had 30 days allegedly to to vacate but you're telling people on may 12th uh, we've been asked by our landlord to leave no you're not telling the truth you're not really giving the whole story you're just giving a shock factor where everybody's saying oh my god uh the mnc got kicked out oh my god they got no building no that's misleading people in mm -hmm. my opinion and there's two sides to every story we know that and but regardless of whichever side you want to believe there is absolutely no excuse in our mind why why the mnc did not obtain another building other than piss poor leadership piss poor management uh it, it really is concerning because uh, again i've never seen chartier get thrown out you have the mnc thrown out of any damn building but regardless if you don't believe that story and you believe the other story or whichever story you want to believe again there's no well, legally for... legally a landlord has to give you a written notice legally yeah. So they can't just pop up the oh, day No, I know of, that, and you know that, of, but I'm yeah. saying there's people out there, you you, you you can show them the sky is blue, and they're going to swear up and down the damn sky is pink or the sky is some other color. They're not going to say that that sky is blue, even if they're looking at it. So that's why I say no matter whichever side you want to believe, because there's some people that, you know, we know this. There's some people that, because we bring you the stories, and people get pissed off at us. Because we say, we, we, we deliver you the stories, we give you the truth, we put the stories out there, and then you turn around and you get mad at us and you want to say something different other than what stories is. Because, you know, as long as the story supports your narrative, you're good with us. But if it don't support your narrative, then you're not good with us. So, I mean, you know, I mean, we, and we're just going down the line. We, we're, we're on the middle of the fence and you have two sides of the fence right there, right? So we're just presenting you the story. So we just want fair treatment for all Métis. We want equality and we want to get rid of any corruption that may exist within these Métis organizations. We just want uh, thing, uh, misappropriations of any funding to go away and we want full transparency. That's not a lot to ask. Well, exactly. And I mean, Métis people, we present the information. You've got to do your own research. You've got to ask the questions. You've got to seek the truth. You can't just take something at face value and say, because somebody's saying this on blah, blah, it's true investigate you you deserve the truth seek the answers and again we know that uh, david charter and the mmf the red river metis are disappointed that the pope will not be coming to manitoba winnipeg to bless louis real's grave uh, oh, okay whatever <laughs> louis real pulled away from the church he said take because you can take catholicism and shove it he pulled away from the church and now you want them to come bless his grave is that what you want? Get out of here, man. Well, but I do think that, uh, all right, let's, let's, let's put things in perspective. For whatever reason, he's going to Alberta. We do know that. Why in the hell is he not going to British Columbia? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I think that he should visit Manitoba. I, absolutely, I think he should visit Manitoba. But not to bless the grave. I only think he should visit Manitoba to, to issue another damn apology to the people in person. Not, not that we want to actually see him in Manitoba, but well, yeah, I think if he's going to go to one, he should because he does have Catholics in Manitoba. Even though I'm not a Catholic, but I think he should go see his Catholics in Manitoba, and uh, and definitely not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We don't really want to see him here in Manitoba, though. But the thing is, he should come to at least. Uh, show his people some respect in Manitoba, right? Well, I really think, I mean, no disrespect to uh, uh, Louis Riel. I re really think, and I know uh, the Pope has a hard time walking. There's pictures of him in a wheelchair. Most places are wheelchair accessible, so he wouldn't be worn out by walking. I think it would be more important and more meaningful uh, that, you know, I don't know, in Edmonton or Alberta, hopefully he's going to be visiting residential school grave sites to me instead of you know don't get upset that he's not gonna 
bless Lurie Rael's grave. Shouldn't it be more important that he be, he should be at ground zero, like Kamloops School in British Columbia? That's when this all started. You go to these key sites where all these little children were buried. That would be symbolic. Not worrying about Lurie Rael and getting upset or butt hurt because he's not going to bless well. his grave. It's, the, it's all about the children. Louis Riel didn't go to residential school that we know of. We, he didn't do that. So let, let's keep residential schools where it should be and not for, you know, publicity or photo ops. Well, we do know that he would participate in some Catholicism during his time, but we do know that he actually walked away from it. And I will say this, but one of the things Will Goudin put out was when he came back from Rome, he actually said that uh, he is not a Catholic. Now, I, I, I find that uh, great because that means that he, he's strong enough in his belief that by going to see this person there, that, that guy, that guy at the Vatican, uh, that uh, that didn't sway him to become a Catholic. And he said he's strong in his own beliefs. And now, uh, you know, and we're not hating on the Catholics. I mean, if you're a Catholic, I said we got relatives that are Catholic. So I even had some friends before that were Catholics. And they I guess they still are. I don't know if you call them friends now because I ain't talked to them in quite a while. Acquaintances, probably. Yeah, now they, they, they migrated to the acquaintance place, uh, line or whatever you want to call it. But they're, uh, they were actually priests, a couple of them. So, uh, you know, we always debated between Christianity and uh, Catholicism. And like I say, I just, I'm just not a Catholic. But if you want to be a Catholic, that's your choice. Everybody's got freedom of choice. And uh, we're not going to put you down for that. However, Catholicism as a whole, yeah, that's a colonial religion. And that religion helped take the right of freedom of religion away from the native people. So remember that. And I think one of the biggest things here that everybody's been sort of... Uh, waiting with bannock breath here and uh, the announcement people have been wondering and uh, the manitoba metis federation national election will be held on june 14th 2022 so uh, the polls are open from 9 a.m until 9 p.m and there will be again uh, two days of advanced polls for the each necessary election and i was kind of uh uh, you know what? I see in the headline in one of the newspaper articles where it says longtime MMF president seeks his eighth term as nominations for the election close on May 14th, 2022. So David Chartran again is running again for his eighth term, folks. Well, let's eighth. talk about his awesome opponent. And his awesome <laughs> opponent is. Uh, you know what? For when the, the Nobody. The, this was a notice and it was just for information purposes only. And on that notice, uh, it says uh, less than opponent. Uh, the only person that at that time of the notice that was running for president and wait for it, folks, but don't hold your breath. David Chartrand running for president. I didn't see an, well, any of these election notices that were for information purposes only. Anybody running against David Chartrand. And I just figured, yeah, you know what? I don't see that listed. I, I just. I, I don't know. I, but, but let me tell you something. I'm not mad about that. And let me explain to you oh. why I'm not mad about that. Yeah, we've had many, many, many issues with David Chartrand. Some of the decisions he's made, some of his leadership himself that he's done, right? And there's been many issues there. However, after seeing the mess this happened after Chartier's, Chartier has been uh, replaced by Cassidy, after seeing that, I, I, I just, at this point in time, do not want to see, I, I really don't want to see somebody else take over as president of the MMF right now. And I never thought I would say that because we, when we were fighting to have Chartier removed and have a new president of the MNC, we at the same time we're doing that against Chartrand, like trying to get uh, uh, pushed for another president of the MMF. But however, at this time, we don't think that that's a good idea. Because it's already a mess at them and see, I mean, hell, they got no building. Can you imagine if we get get somebody in there that's uh, just worse as Cassidy? I don't know if that's even possible, but if you could get a president in the MMF that's as worse as Cassidy, that's why at this point in time, it is better to stick with Chartrand. I know a lot of people don't like Chartrand. A lot of people do like Chartrand. And however, and no matter about all the issues in the past, 
the past is the damn past and we just can't handle another mess up like what happened with the mnc we can't ha handle something like that happening with the mmf so no i'm not mad that he will damn sure be reelected. I'm actually not disappointed. And I know a lot of y'all that has been following us for the last five years, <clears throat> I know that this may shock y'all, but you got to understand why I'm saying this. Wouldn't it be better to keep Chartran in there, knowing the mess them and sees in with their new president? Do you really want a cluster? you know to happen and uh within the mmf i mean good god i don't think we can handle that right now chartrand's experienced yes every leader makes mistakes every leader makes mistakes but we got to move past those mistakes and and, and we got to try to move forward united man we got to unite move forward and the mmf you got to admit it they've been doing good things recently I mean, yes, I we're, we have many issues with the past with Chartrand. Recently, they've been doing great things, though. I'm going to bite my tongue and try and uh, not choke because uh, that's... So you would like to see a situation no, I don't, the MMF uh, like what happened no, with I, I don't, MNC? I don't agree with the MNC and Cassidy right now. They're they're on a sinking ship. Uh, that's There's no doubt about it in my mind. The proof is all there, and I'll leave that alone. The MNC is is done. It's going to be done because uh, I'll say that. But according to a May 14th, 2022 article, it looks like, and I'll read it here, uh, at, uh, I quote, at least 21 of these positions will not have an election as the number of filled, uh, filed nominations does not exceed the number of positions. And according to this article, those these those positions include the president so that means that he's going to get in by default default yeah according to this article because nobody's running against him so uh, according I, to this article and again um it what, includes the president as well as all positions except the two regional executive office positions in the thompson uh region so it looks like according to this yesterday uh he's going to just get in well, I mean, again, when we started this five years ago and we started Métis Warrior five years ago, I, I never thought the day would come when, when I would say that I'm okay with that. I, I never thought the day would come. But I just think right now is not a good time to replace somebody like Chartrand with somebody new, unless we absolutely knew that person and then knew that that would be a great candidate. And we'd have to damn sure know that they're qualified for the position. With everything that's going on at the MNC right now, yeah, there's going to be hiccups with Chartran. I'm sure there's still going to be more hiccups or whatever. But you can imagine putting somebody in there inexperienced. So you'd have to put a candidate up there that had some great experience and some great leadership skills. And we do know a few of them. We do know a few people that would be good for MMF president. But right now, we're just not ready to see a new president in the MML. We're just not. And you know, at least I'm not. I know. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll leave my. I'll reserve my opinion or decision for maybe a couple of months down the road. But I know a lot of people out there are saying. Uh, I've heard a lot of people in conversation with myself. Well, maybe it's a waiting game with MNC. Maybe they're waiting all this out, the legalities and all. But do you not do you not understand, Métis people? You're allowing. Uh, the MMF to gain so much ground that by time, if something ever comes to fruition, it's going to be too late. The MMF is going to gain all this ground that, I mean, the MNC is really floundering. They really, really are. And they're showing people out there that they really don't have a handle or a grasp on what's going on uh, with the nation they're supposed to be a national organization now with no building floundering out there in social media but, uh, i mean the mmf yes they have done good things they're i mean i disagree with a lot of things but they've done some good things i mean i i can say that from personal experience uh, i can really say that but i mean recently they, but we know there's been a lot of issues in the past but with those issues in the past, I mean, I think a lot of people wait till election time and then they just uh, embellish a lot of shit because we, 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 we've been interviewed by a lot. Of, uh, I mean, we've interviewed a lot of people who told us a lot of things and we believe them and they always end up changing their story a little bit. 
or they'd end up, uh, I and mean, these are interviews that you've never heard. So these are interviews that's never been in a show because what would happen is people would end up changing their story a little bit or, or things wouldn't just click or add up or they'd even back out of doing the show because, you know, maybe it was politically motivated on why some of these people were saying some of the things they were saying about some people. And that's one of the things that was really discouraging to me. I mean, I think if you have something to say about somebody, you should say it, whether it's fuck, whether it's election time or not, you should say what you have to say. Don't hold it for election time and try to embellish it. If it's the truth, say it and don't hold it for a political gain. That's right. And um, according to the MMF Constitution, the MMF must hold an election for president and other MMF cabinet positions within four years and three months of the prior election. So there are seven regions. Each of these regions have a vice president and two regional executive officers. And the last election was held on May 31st, 2018, folks. So again, we probably know as per this article that uh, David Chartrand will indeed get his eighth term. And I think president. after that, he, he ain't gonna wanna be president no more. I mean, it's time to enjoy life. <laughs> I mean, I, not to say he's not enjoying life now, but I, th I think I think he feels like he needs to be in there the way the nation's the shape the nation's in right now. Again, we know a lot of people that would make a better, we feel better president than Chartrand. But however, are you really willing to take that chance with knowing that people change when they get power and they get in control of the finances in some way, shape, or form? Are you willing to take that chance with somebody? Even though you know their qualifications, you know who they are, people seem to change once they get elected. And right now, we at least we know Chartrand. We know what he can do, and we know what he has done. And so at least we this is somebody that we know. So I think at this point, yeah, uh, let, let the man get reelected, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, and, 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 and let's see what happens, you know, Ho hopefully we can make some progress, but yeah. Well, like I said, another disappointing thing when I seen this notice that was for information purposes only from the office of the chief electoral office is uh, the candidates for, you know, vice president, uh, various reason, uh, regions and regional executive officers. It's just names of people that have been in there for quite a long time. There's really no new blood in the MMF. So to me, that's disappointing, disheartening. There should you, be new blood. I, 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 I just see the same names again. But uh, again, I think the condition of the MNC has changed the way things were going to head because the way things were going to head, the route things were going was you get a new president in the MNC and then you were going to go for the new president in the MMF. That was the kind of the, the, the plan there to straighten out the nation, right? Mm -hmm. However, with the disaster of the MNC, I think now that that's, uh, that's changed a lot of people's mind on the direction that people would go, and why not just stay with who you already got? And uh, because we know Cassidy is going to be out of there, and uh, we do uh, uh, see that. And if it don't happen, it's because those same people are going to try to vote her back in or whatever. And keep in mind, that's not the nation doing it. That's not all these, all the mates across the nation are not voting this president in. And it should be a bigger election. But the way things are structured is only a certain few get to vote for this president. And that's, that's the messed up thing. So when they made the mistake and voted her in office, how you handle that is you vote them out of office and put somebody in there that will not. Uh, they would basically ask Cassidy to step down. And like I said, really disappointed on the MNC uh, uh, being buildingless and just announcing it on the day uh, that the holding company takes possession. I mean, okay, you're not informing your citizens and you're floundering. And uh, for people in uh, Manitoba, and again, even if you're a uh, MMF citizen and you reside outside of Manitoba, you can still you may be eligible for mail-in ballots if you're outside of Manitoba. June 14th, 2022, uh, the polls will be open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Get out and vote. I know it's the same names in there. but well, it... I mean, yeah, you can either vote for Chartrand or Chartrand. Take your pick. So it's either Chartrand or Chartrand, but I'm not mad about that right now. So, um, you know, but with the other people, yeah, I think there should be new blood put in there. I don't think that there should be the same old, same old 
control and everything like that. No, if you if you're gonna have Chartrand stay as president, definitely some of the board members do need to be replaced and uh, voted out of office. And you gotta you gotta put stuff up, put fresh perspectives in there. And again, we don't know that maybe just nobody put their name on the no nomination ballot. No, we know a lot of people that wanted to do <laughs> yeah. it. We know a lot not not for president, but other uh, other uh, positions such as. Uh, vice president in the various regions and regional executive directors. Maybe there was no other name. I doubt it, but I mean, seeing people again like Leah Laplante and uh, Alfred Anderson, Andrew, Andrew Carrier, it's the same gang, a lot of the same gang. You got to put new people in there. You can't sit there and think it's okay to have the same people running stuff this whole time. You got to have uh, fresh ideas. Fresh ideas. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, our hope and our future is our children and our youth. So getting more youth involved to elected positions i mean that's the way of the future really for the for the metis people across canada and to the united states get more youth into elected positions i'm not gonna say that and hell Cass cassidy is no. what quotation marks youth <laughs> and she's screwing up man i think it's the best it's the best best candidate it shouldn't be an age thing i think all these people running around saying youth and female or male and whatever come on man i mean it's about the best candidate it's the best candidate it doesn't matter if you're male it doesn't matter if you're female it doesn't matter if you're young you're old we need to have fresh ideas and uh you know more other people involved in different uh, positions i agree with that too as well yeah I, I, yeah exactly well i mean that's it for us for now so we'll try to get another show out soon uh, we know we'll have one around election time but that's June fourteenth. We may we'll have one out before. No, that's uh, yeah. We'll have one out around that time, and we'll again, probably have one out in between this show and that show as June well. June fourteenth, twenty twenty two, folks. Yep. And so uh, there you go. Take care. Stay safe. Later.